we're going to make a little return visit to my little four tube Nixie thermometer. Uh, where we left off last time is I got it all built. I had it powered up, but I got the wrong chip for it to uh, have the conversion from Celsius to uh, Fahrenheit. So it was about two or three days before Christmas Eve and I contacted the seller from eBay. I says, uh, I got the kit built. I got all my tubes in. I got it all powered up, but it's saying Celsius and I didn't request Celsius. When I ordered it, I requested Fahrenheit. So somehow it got missed, but it's all resolved now. I got the chip. So let's do a, a little quick uh, overview of what I did. So when I left off, I said I was gonna uh, figure out how I was going to uh, uh, figure out the uh, resistor for the uh, white LEDs. So I have done that. So we can uh, give it a quick power up just to uh, see what it looks like. And uh, as you can see, it's all uh, powered up now. And you see that I got the, uh, the uh, LEDs uh, barely lit. So they're just, uh, of course, on camera, they look, it looks fantastic. And if I were to uh, turn off the uh, lights here, but you can kind of see, not really, but you can see that they're lit up and uh, stuff like that. So when I first put the, uh, when the kit come with all its parts, it come with uh, red RGB, I mean, red LEDs. So they had a resistor package for them, but I really don't care for red LEDs underneath a Nixie tube. I either like the, I like the stark white or I like the warm white underneath the tubes. And I don't want them full bore. I don't want, because when I first powered it up, I figured out that the, uh, the voltage going to the LEDs was about 2.9 volts. So I made a little jumper and I jumped all the resistors where they would normally go, lit it up and it was just, it was too bright. It was actually washing out the Nixies. You couldn't even see them. I mean, if you looked real close, you could see them, but they were just way too washed out. So I says, I gotta tone that down a little bit. So I tried uh, I think it's like 330 ohm resistors that come in the kit. Uh, it really didn't knock it down that much. So I went into my uh, horde of resistors and then I, I just started uh, sticking things in the slots to see what would work. So uh, the next choice I came to, uh, to try was a 1K resistor. And I tried about two in a row, and then the ones that were in the 330s next to each other just to get a comparison. And I was like, it's still too bright. So I says, let's double it. So let's try a 2K resistor. So that's what you see here is a 2K resistor uh, lighting up the, um, the under tube uh, luminosity or luminance or lighting package or uh, under tube lighting thing here and that's what I got so when it's in the dark it actually looks quite pleasing to look at that you got the uh, nice uh, Nixie effect where it's like hey it looks like a Nixie but it's got a little something underneath of it which I kind of like I know some people are purists they don't want anything underneath the Nixie tubes I understand that I in certain situations I do like not having a uh, LED underneath the tube, lighting it out and washing it out and making it look like crap. So I decided to use a 2K uh, resistor and I got them all soldered in and stuff like that. But prior to all that baloney, I had it running for a little while. And it was, I know it was running in Celsius. So the only two numbers that were relevant along with the uh, 
plus and the, uh, and the, and the minus was uh, the numbers. The numbers were right on spot in Celsius. So, uh, of course, uh, as being the way this, this is set up, you know, you get a little bit of heat on the board just because you're running a Nixie tube at 170 volts. There's going to be some heat generated through the board. So that was kind of skewing the readings. Uh, I guess you could compensate with that. If you could go in, I don't have the programming or anything like that. You can program the chips. Uh, you can go in there and, and calibrate it to be accurate and stuff like that. But that's not what I was looking for. So if you remember when I was building this, the uh, kit come with an external jack so you could run an external uh, temperature probe. And that's what I have done. I have added the external temperature probe. So I got the uh, three and a half millimeter uh, jack here to, uh, and of course I had to tone it all out and, and figure out uh, what goes to what and then have to match that with the wires on the uh, temperature probe. So on the temperature probe, there's it's a three wire temperature probe. You got a, uh, a power and a ground and a signal. So you got to figure out uh, on the uh, schematic of the of the uh, parts list uh, what the uh, three-legged transistor, the three-legged uh, thermistor, or whatever you want to call the thing. Just remember, I'm a hobbyist, so I don't have all my terminology. So got it all matched up, and now I have a nice long. So you have less chance of having something influence the temperature to uh, measure the temperature. And I was real pleased of the results. So now that I have the uh, temperature probe in, of course, I probably have to reboot this thing to uh, get it to play nice. There we go. So now that it's working right and it's saying it's uh, 22 uh, Celsius in here which is uh, pretty spot on. I mean, even though I was handling this thing and, and touching it and stuff like that, it's pretty spot on. But, like I said, I don't want it in Celsius. I want it in Fahrenheit. So, just come in the mail today, the uh, replacement chip. So, prior to putting the chip in, I got all these nice little wires to be trimming. So, all the wires have to be trimmed now that I am happy with the, uh, with the results of the, uh, of the tube placement. So now it's time to uh, trim all them uh, wires up and get them out of the way because they are uh, unneeded at this point. And they don't have to be uh, trimmed 100% uh, flush. So I'm going to back you out a little bit. i got to turn the light on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to start chopping these wires out just so that they don't, they don't touch anything. And it was funny when I, uh, I had a different video on the, uh, on the tubes there and I had a commentary of uh, somebody I think when I was building the uh, single uh, Japan tube clock the single Nixie Japan tube somebody commented to me uh, and they got the uh, instructions from a PV electronics uh, suggestion how to put uh, Nixie tubes in their slots so he wrote and he uh, he promptly deleted it after he realized his mistake but I got the notification in the email uh, prior to him uh, deleting the uh, the comment and he says uh, PV electronics suggest that when you install a Nixie tube that you uh, cut each leg approximately two mil two millimeters uh, shorter than the others and it makes installation uh, easier and yes it does for uh, Nixie sockets that don't have a bottom, like these, 
these are a pass-through socket. So you can do that little trick uh, and spiral the uh, Nixie tubes. And I clearly did it on this one because they were all spiral spiraled when I did it. And it made installation uh, so much easier to uh, do compared, compared to my other kits where you have to... Uh, you're pretty much screwed at... You have to uh, cut them flush all the way around, flare them just right, and then stick them into the Nixie sockets because they have a bottom. So... With that statement being said, if you were to spiral uh, about 10 to 12, I think it's 12 legs on that tube, you would need about uh, 8 millimeters or 8 to 10 millimeters of space to have in the Nixie sockets. And remember, it's a closed bottom Nixie socket. Well, the problem with that is there's not enough space there's not eight to ten millimeters of space plus to accommodate that kind of technique of sticking the uh, Nixie tubes in the uh, in the Nixie sockets great idea and only works for certain setups like this one where it has bottomless Nixie sockets to uh, do that So like I said, I was just cutting these uh, to uh, just so they don't touch anything. But I do want them uh, a little long for uh, just in case I need to service this and put it on the Nixie healer or something like that. I can just uh, pluck them out and then put them back in. Because if they're too short, it makes it hard to put them back into the uh, slot and stuff like that. So... We got the legs trimmed, and now it's time to uh, to put the uh, correct chip into the uh, Nixie holder here, Nixie uh, thermometer here, and get it to uh, working correctly for my needs. So the seller was cool. He responded like on Christmas Day. That once the holiday is over, I'll get one shipped out to you. And he even offered uh, like a, a blank chip and, uh, and a programming module to, uh, to uh, program the chip. And I said, no, I don't, wanna, I don't want none of that. I just want, I just want another chip already pre-programmed because my coding skills suck and I don't want to deal with that. So just give me another chip. So... Here is the chip, and it's even marked in Fahrenheit, where the other one was marked in Celsius. So we will stick the uh, chip in. Of course, we got to get the other chip out, and it's this one right here in the middle. So we'll get a little spudger, and we'll just stick them in there. So this is a good chip. It just has to be programmed correctly. To the, uh, or if somebody wants to have this chip that has a similar setup and uh, wants to have a, s a chip already pre-programmed -pro in uh, Celsius, they can have this one. So now we'll stick our uh, correct chip in there. And our little notches are synced up. Just want to make sure that all the pins are going in. And they're not going to uh, fold over or bend over or anything like that.
That all looks good. So now we can uh, plug everything back in. And plug our temperature probe in. And then our uh, DC power cord. <laughs> there we go. 73 Fahrenheit. Yeah, baby! I love it. Now, what's nice about this Nixie Therm, I'm going to call it a Nixie Therm because I don't really know the exact... It's not really described as a, as a Nixie Therm. There is a Nixie Therm, and uh, I call that the Nixie Therm. The uh, bar graph type one. I'm going to call this one a Nixie Therm, too. So... We're saying that it's uh, 73F, and now uh, if I were to uh, hold this probe, and what's nice about this particular Nixie Therm, it has one degree resolution, where my other uh, two-tube Nixie Therm, it was uh, two-digit uh, um, resolution, so it's kind of annoying. Now we're watching at the uh, temperature climb. Very nice. So that is almost the last step of this little project except it has nothing to stand on it didn't come with a case it didn't come with standoffs or anything like that so we got to add some standoffs to this to uh finish this project so i got to go back in the hoard here and find my standoff package Here they are. So being a hobbyist, uh, of course, I always got a uh, package of uh, standoffs here. So we'll get some uh, standoffs for this guy so we can stand them up. Of course, we got to clear all the uh, electronics. So let's see, what do we got here that's tall? And then we need to do something that's kind of thick, too. So let's try these. Too big. So that was uh, M3. So we'll try M2 and a half. See if that fits the hole. That's too big. So next size down is M2. And that's my smallest one. That'll fit. Perfect. So we need four of them. Now we need some nuts. So, um, two nuts. These little guys are tiny. That out of the way and now we can uh, unplug this for a minute 
get it out of its holder. Because that's where it's been sitting since I built this thing. Because it doesn't have any feet. And now we can have some feet. And of course I drop it on the floor. Probably never did be found again. And find it later. I'll have to get another one out. Get this out of the way. So I can move this further in. These don't have to be super tight, as long as it, uh, it's not wobbling around. There we go. Now it's got something to sit on. And we got plenty of adjustment. So in case our uh, Nixie tubes are not quite level, we can level them actually. Because each one of these is just a little bit different. So that's why it's nice having a little extra. So you can line them up. Now I'll clean up the uh, mess here. So we don't have these things rolling on the floor and going into your foot. So now we can plug our probe back in. Put these away. And then re-plug this in. And this project is officially done. So that's a wonderful. So here's our little Nixie thermometer. With our current temperature. And I'll show the uh, main camera. Turn that off. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! I love it! I still want to know where Mr. Insidious Nixie got his 5-tube Nixie thermometer that displays the humidity. I like to, I like to know where he got that from. Of course, even though his set tells in Fahrenheit, maybe it's convertible to uh, tell in Fahrenheit. So that's it for the uh, Nixie thermometer. We have uh, successfully... Uh, Got it to display uh, Fahrenheit. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.